Good evening and welcome to my um, weekly Node-RED development live stream. I'm Nick O'Leary here with an hour or so of doing some development work on the core of Node-RED. Um, if you've been following along, we're going to be carrying on with some of the features we've been um, working on in the last uh, two or three streams around the view tools in the editor. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan for tonight. Uh, if you're watching along live, do say hi in the chat and see Jim Bob, Scotchy, Steve, good evening, welcome back. Um, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, do drop a like, to say hi in the comments, whatever you want to do. And really, we're just going to crack straight on. So um, what have we been doing? Or, well, what have I been doing in the last couple live streams? Because I haven't really been touching... Um, the, these bits of the code, I've sort of saved it for the live stream. So I'm whilst I'm talking to you, I'm doing a whole bunch of context switching in my workspace, getting out of one pull request I'm working on back into the one I'm doing for this live stream. So um, let's let's crack straight on. Um, so the one we are looking at, here we go, add align actions to editor. This is where what we've been doing for the last few weeks, um, we've created a whole bunch of new actions in the editor to align the selection to the left, center, right, top, middle, and bottom. Um, I have done the work to distribute the selection horizontally and vertically. Um, was that last week's live stream? I forget now. Um, yeah, I think that was, wasn't it? Which is good. And what else have I done? Done. Have I done anything else? No. Um, so that's what we've done in this pull request so far, and we're going to carry straight on. I think, as I said at the end of last live stream, we're going to look at adding. I mean, it's all well and good building these menu options and put, giving them some default shortcuts in the editor, but that doesn't. Yeah, you, know, you need to know those things exist in order to uh, use them. Um, and so they're quite hard to discover, is basically what I'm saying. So the plan tonight is to add somewhere in the UI, um, maybe experiment a little in terms of what works, what doesn't work, um, how prominent it gets made, but to add some way to discover those actions um, that makes sense. So. I, my starter for 10 is a menu option. Um, now, this whole menu component is uh, a bit long in the tooth, I think is the polite way. Um, it's not very... Well, it's quite easy for me to modify because a lot of it is quite hard-coded. What's trickier is for things to contribute menu options. Now, I, I don't want to go down that route tonight because, yeah, that's that's a can of worms to unpick um, on another day. The question is, though, where in this menu do we want to put these align tools? Um, now, the kind of the natural, in my mind, the natural place to hang it under is under the view menu. So at the moment, the view menu gives you um, menu options for a bunch of the debug sidebars. Um, in fact, what's I'm trying to remember what the logic is here now, because it doesn't list all of them. It doesn't have the info sidebar. It's got debug. This is curious. So why don't we have the help sidebar? Uh, okay, well, maybe we'll find that out. But um, given at the moment, I think the natural place to put our menu would be a submenu under view to have align, distribute, selection, the only downside is this menu is quite hard to navigate once you're getting more than one level 
of hierarchy because it's all too easy for your mouse to exit the menu and your sub menu to disappear and you lose your entire position. It used to be this import export. Um, the import, we didn't have this UI for browsing your local library. So it used to be this import would open up menus and you'd browse your local library as menus and submenus and and it was yeah unusable <laughs> to be polite um which is why we got rid of it so as a general rule i try and avoid having more than one level of submenu that said for the align tools we've got how many we've got um one two three four we're like eight actions to add menu items for. So yeah, that's, um, we can't stick the, yeah, this menu will end up getting huge. So let's start just by sticking a sub menu and see how that feels. So let's dig in and look at how that menu is constructed. Um, so here we are in our source code, if you can follow along. We want to go into editor client, into JS. Um, then is it main? No, it will be red.js. So this is, um, uh, this is the main entry point of node red that does all the work to build up the editor, load all the state, set everything up, including building the main menu. Uh, Steve, you say, ooh, what have I pressed? Sorry, here we are. Um, Steve asks, what about toolbar buttons in the gray end or in the editor workspace? Yeah, um, that. this is another option, is to have um, selection a uh, selection tools button down here. Um, so that, depending how we get on in time for doing the menu, that this was going to be a, a second thing to experiment with. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Right. So where were we? So we're in red.js. We've got this build main menu. So what this does is we build up this array of all the different menu options. And we just pass that to our red.menu.init utility, which does the work to build the menu. Um, so adding new options is actually relatively straightforward. We just need to add extra things to this menu options. And in fact, here you can see the view menu the, um, oh, the chat is covered, Nick. What's going on? Oh, hold on. I thought I'd fixed the Twitch chat, but I can see. Let me work out why this is. Where are you? No. One second, guys. Uh, Twitch chat, there you are. Let's lock that. No, no. Ah, there we are. There we go. I, res I resized it when I was playing around earlier. So I've made the font a bit more readable, but blimey, that blue font does not look good. Oh, anyway. There we go. Hopefully you can now see the chat, at least from what I can see <laughs> there matches what's up to date on the, um, on the live feed I've got. And let me just lock that so I don't forget. So yeah, we've got menu options. Here we've got the view menu. <clears throat> um, it's got an ID, it's got the label, 
for what gets displayed. And then because it has its own submenu, it's recursively got an options array, which is the submenu. And wherever you see a null, that represents a separator. So if I just pull it up, so well, so here you can see I've got under the view menu, we've got palette sidebar event log action list, views palette sidebar event log action list, and then we've got all of these, and all of these are dynamically added by the, the sidebar as sidebars register themselves. Um, but well, no, but so what we're going to do is just add an entry here. Um, call it view tools for want of a better name. Uh, we haven't got a translation for it yet, so we're just going to call it um, align distribute selection. Maybe that'll do for now. Um, and then this is going to have some sub menu, sub menu options. So we are going to have, where's my list? Copy that list. Right, and now we just need to do some mass editing. Um, yeah, Noxy Boy, that's another option is to have a not put it under the view and to have a separate edit menu. Um, in fact, that makes more sense just to start straight out of the bag. So let's get rid of what I'd, well, let's just cut what I was doing. Um, and we're going to add in a new top level one here. Uh, yeah, view tools. And we're going to. I'll call it edit because that's fairly normal, but we may change that. Um, and now we're not going to nest it that much. We are just going to have one level of options for now. View tools. I have to just go through and give them all a proper name. Label. Again, we're going to have to go through and do proper translations. And then for each one, on select can either be a function or the name of a registered action. So, um, because that's what we're doing, we're adding menu options for these actions. That's all goodness. And let's just close that off. Right, so this is a line left, a line center, right. Um, Go look at my favourite reference point because I seem to remember PowerPoint labels these things and groups them in what I find quite intuitively. So uh, a line, yes, yeah, so they separate out left, centre, right, top, middle, bottom. So uh, a line to left. Line to center, line to right, 
and then we'll stick a null in so we get a separator. Um, then, yeah, no, no, we this this may well get knocked one level deeper, but let's just just get this in because knocking it one level deeper is simply just wrapping this list in a, another option. So that's easier to do. Um, mind to bottom. And then this is distribute horizontally distribute vertically and your point about yes it would free up the top level and edit which is going to be important because we've got some of the other PRs I've been working on want, will want to stick a menu option in around here as well. So um, yeah, let's see what that now looks like. Yep, so we've now got the edit menu and we have all our things. Oh, I, I want to add a add a null in to give us that separator. Yep, edit, align to left, center, right, top, middle, bottom, distribute horizontally, distribute vertically. Nice, and let's just, and let's make sure all that works. So if I, let's pick those three nodes uh, edit, align to left, let's align them to the left. Uh, edit, align to right, it's done it. Okay, so that's all it takes, haha, <laughs> to add um, the menu option. Let's, um, again, if we just have a look at... Um, yeah, well, we're not going to have rotate <laughs> as a an option anytime soon, but um, interesting that the grouping functions fall under here, and reordering objects fall under here. So it's this reordering objects. That's the, I've got another PR that implements that, so you can change the order that nodes um, appear in the workspace. So when if you have them overlapping. Not that we like overlapping, um, then um, yeah, you can make the choice. Um, so Noxyboy, well, in my so the question in the chat from Noxyboy: Should it be edit view projects? Just in terms of preference. Well, in many ways, I see the projects menu option as the same as your as the file menu option because it's creating your new project, opening a project. So it's, um, uh, yeah. So that that's why the projects goes at the top because it's more akin to the file menu, which would go first. In fact, it's file. I'm just looking up in Chrome, file edit view. So if we're gonna, if we're gonna go down this route, that does suggest we want to stick Edit. Um, yeah, but the, the point of this is we we are experimenting. You know, we are seeing what works, what feels right, um, and in fact, in PowerPoint, I don't know if does the screen share get in the top menu? No, you can't see. So in PowerPoint. You actually have a dedicated arrange menu, um, which has all the ordering and grouping and aligning options. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe that's. A I think in very. Um, no, Noxy, it's it's good to. <laughs> Good to bounce around ideas um, and good to question anything you see because 
It helps. There's plenty of things we take for granted in here, and it's the questions are good because it just makes. I might explain why something's the way it is, and that helps explain it, and maybe it makes me realise something is not how it should be. So, um, yeah. So there is a question of whether it should be an edit menu because that could have. We've got like copy and paste, cut, copy and paste, which you would expect. Um, yeah, and undo, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste. There's a case of, well, do we want, does this menu, does the user benefit from this menu having loads of options? Because to be honest, it's not often, not often that um, you have to delve into this menu. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to leave it here for now under edit. What am I going to Well, let's, what should we do? Let's just try just for the fun of it. Yes, I said fun. Let's create a new menu called arrange. I'm just going to Um, I'm gonna, yeah, so Jim Bob makes a very good point. It'd be nice to show the shortcut keystrokes in the menu items. It does take up space, but, um, uh, yeah, it, again, it's a perfectly normal thing to expect to see shortcuts if, if there are shortcuts set. Um, uh, You know what, that's, that's an yeah. Hold that thought. We might have a little tinker with that in a minute just to see if it's, if it's worthwhile. Um, so let me just, let me just, so I've moved it to an arrange menu and then I was in the middle of menu item Yeah, this is a view menu, menu item, arrange menu. And then menu item, edit menu. So what order to cut, copy, and paste exist in the standard menu? That's cut, copy, paste. Cut, copy, paste. Cut, copy, paste. And what are the actions actually called? Is it really that? Um, right. Someone make a note. Cut selection to internal clipboard. Cut selection to internal clipboard. And copy selection to internal clipboard. And paste selection from internal clipboard, I bet. Let me check. Yeah, oh no, paste from, yeah, okay. <laughs> paste from. Okay, Dyke, let's see, what does that now look like? Um, 
I mean, it's an interesting point you make about Noxy Boy about users getting overwhelmed and the like. So, absolutely, part of part of this work is you know improving the usability. There is a piece of work that I have been working on to give us a way to help introduce users to the editor and give them a bit of a guided tour of, of it. Um, maybe give you a... Well, I've, I've given people a sneak peek of it on Slack, but maybe I'll show you where it's got to, um, depending on how we get on tonight. Um, so, yeah, let's... If I've got something selected, edit, cut. Yeah, Control-Z. And... Which reminds me, we we'll add a couple more entries. Undo, redo. And what are those called? Yeah, is it just undo and redo? Yeah. Undo, redo. And so there's a bit more logic we want to build in because at the moment I've got nothing selected and there's nothing on the um, nothing in the internal clipboard. So paste doesn't do anything. Cut and copy don't do anything. It would be better if those guys were disabled. Like I don't know, there must be a dis yeah, like the groups menu disables stuff that you can't select. So. Um, yeah, but we can do a bit of logic to maintain those menu items properly. Um, in fact, why don't we... Why don't we do that? So what I want to do is, if I go find... Go where... Go find where we actually implement where are we? Yeah, of course, we're in view.js. Awesome. Um, okay. That is okay. Um, what I need to find is... Do we have... There. Selection change. That's what I was looking for. So... Are you considering an upgrade node red from the UI? Uh, oh my, there's a very loud bird out there. Um, in what upgrade what of where? <laughs> from what, Noxy Boy? You... What was I looking for? I was looking for where we actually define. Okay, so so what we're doing here is you can see just above is where I where we actually register the actions for the cut copy paste. What we're also doing here is now registering a listener on. Um, uh, so whenever the selection changes, um, we're going to do something and let's have a look, remind ourselves what that looks like. All right. So have no dread notify you if there are updates available. Um, I don't know. It's because the way Node-RED could be embedded, um, it's not necessary for us to tell the end user that that there is an upgrade available. And certainly, given all the different ways you could install Node-RED, having a one-click upgrade is not um, not trivial. So, 
yeah, there's that's one of those ones, just because of the flexibility of Node-RED, there isn't an easy one-size-fits-all solution to that. Um, yeah. Right, so at this point we're going to say if selection.nodes and selection.nodes.length is greater than zero, then um, we want, so we've actually got stuff selected. We want to, so we want, let's just take a copy of these three then what we want to do is to enable or disable them those menu options based on how many things are selected and I can't remember what what we do that we do set disabled don't we yep so red dot menu set disabled and I don't like this API it all menu items because of the way it works all menu items are expected to have a globally unique ID which yeah isn't an awful idea but um, I'm set disabled yeah ID doesn't need the hash state so set disabled has has selection let's just capture this as a boolean ah in fact we only want to do cut and copy on that one and then um, we are going to set paste disabled by default oh and I need to get the logic I've got the logic the wrong way around here um, yeah we has selection okay let's let's keep it named properly so has selection will be whether we actually have some nodes selected and then we want to set it disabled as the inverse of that so if we've nothing selected we do disable and then for paste well when you whenever you load up the editor there will be nothing in the internal paste buffer so we disable that by default and then if we go to copy selection um, which does all this work, it's going to set the clipboard to have something, at which point we can re-enable that menu item. Let's see if all that makes sense and does all that work. So hopefully, cut, copy, oh, paste is, paste is enabled there, which makes me think think um, I think there's a timing issue here I think this code is getting evaluated before the menu is built so the menu options don't yet exist so let me just check the there must be a way for me to set the initial state as disabled um, let's find Yes, opt disabled. So um, we can set the initial state to disabled right there. Okay. So, yep, everything is disabled. Great. If I select something, cut and copy are now enabled. If I now copy something, Paste is now enabled. Nice. Um, so the other one is going to be undo and redo. So 
So we're going to disable them both by default. And then we're going to go into history.js. Let me just take a copy of the ID. So we go into history.js. So this is what manages all, does all the work around undo. Um, and where is well, here's an easy one when we clear the history we want to do a red dot menu dot set disabled of both of those to true because if we are clearing the history it means you can't undo or redo anything um what I don't see is that what we call it? We call it pop. Yeah, because you push events into history and then you pop them off. Yeah. Ah, this is this is due for a bit of a tidy up, but we're going to live with it for now. Um, so pop is the function whenever. No, sorry, push gets called whenever undo history, um, oh, whenever you add something to the undo stack. So we want, at that point, undo history needs to be enabled. Redo should be disabled because we clear the redo history whenever you push a new undo event on it. Um, then pop so yeah, so this is where we, um, here's where we want to add a bit more logic. So we want, uh, if undo history length is zero, there's nothing to undo. So um, disable that. Whereas if the redo history length yeah same deal if it's got nothing in it then disable that i think that makes sense let's have a look so undo and redo are both disabled i make a change undo is now enabled redo is disabled i hit undo Undo is now disabled because I've undone the one event in the stack, but redo is available. And I go in again and, oh, redo is still. Oh, now that's curious. Why does, oh, because I didn't add any logic down here for when you actually explicitly do a redo. So let's do exactly the same deal. Um, yeah, check the lengths of both undo and redo history and update the menu options to match. I have to say, I'm going um, far beyond what I plan to, but, you know, this is all good stuff. I hope it's interesting. Um, technically, yeah, it's above and beyond the arrange menu, but we'll live with that for now. Um, Nice. So the, whilst there are other changes we could make, like the grouping selection and stuff could become a menu under a, a range, but you know, I think it's okay having it as a top level thing there for, for now. Um, import and export, I think are okay as having top level rather than having import and export as options under edit. Um, search flows, now, you know, find is often a menu option under edit, but I think, again, keeping search flows at the top level is, um, is useful, I think. What else do we have? Um, oh, there's select all and select options. 
how useful is it to have? I guess some users will find it useful to have select options. Um, so let's do select all. Sorry, I'm just pausing for effect. Um, yeah, so we have got <laughs> invert selection. Yep. Well, we don't have an action for that, <laughs> so I'm not going to go and implement right this second. Um, select all. Select none or select none or clear selection. Oh, I think that's a bad example. Let's have a look. What does what do we do in here? In here, here we have get select all. Don't have other select modes, so just go with this for now. Edit, select all, yay, selected. Nice. Right, let's leave it there for <laughs> throwing things into the um, menu. What I want to have a look at is Jim Bob's, was it Jim Bob? Uh, yeah, Jim Bob asked about showing the keystrokes in the menu options. Let's just have a little think as to how that might work. Um, let me just have a little think. So, uh, I think select none is that, uh, just not explain in the chat. Should it be select all or deselect? Um, I'd say in a lot of apps I use, they have select none rather than deselect. Um, I don't know if it just translates better or just looks better having, you know, mentally you're thinking, what do you want to select? Select all, select none. Because we have got other select actions. We've got select upstream, select downstream, um, I think those are in our view tools. So, yeah, I'm going to leave that be for now. Now, I want to focus on the menu for the second. So, this is all the code that builds up the individual menu items. And here is the code that builds up the actual visible part of the link. You can see that you can have an optional icon, sub level, sub the sorry, sub label. Who does who does sub ah uh, sub labels are because we use the same component up here. Sub labels are these longer labels. So I think they presume you've got a big um, top label. So there we add the um, the label. So it's at this point where we would want to add in the um, yeah. In fact, we're going to do it down here. We are going. What we're going to do is say if opt dot. Is it really? ID. Trigger action. Bear with me just whilst I work out what's going on here. Um, yeah. So 
So if the if on select if the type of on select is a string, then we assume it's an action name. Um, and what we can do is we can find out the shortcut for that. But I can't remember. Red keyboard dot get shortcut core undo. Yeah. Okay, so that if a keyboard shortcut is registered, that shortcut will then become this object which has information about it. We now want a way to render that nicely, and we have we have got something for that. Let's have a look. I think in if we look in popover, no, not that one. Um, here we go. So here we've got, this is for the tooltips. So some of our tooltips, like, here we go, reset zoom. You can see how it, there it does show you the keyboard shortcut alongside the tooltip. And that's this code here. Short, you can see that there's the line that I've just written in the other file, red.keyboard shortcut then if it exists and it's got a key, it it does some work. Um, but we're gonna just copy and paste that code for now into menu. Um, in fact, it is, there we go. So red.keyboard.format key can do the work to, um, generate a, a HTML representation of the shortcut key in a standard format. I do just want to check. I can see that that function takes two arguments, the second one being a boolean, which says plain. Um, and that is because Yeah, I think that is what we want, we want it plain. So, okay, so that's gonna generate all that and then we're just gonna append it to link and see what's what. Well, as it stands, nothing. Okay, so that's not gone to plan. Uh, oh, double, okay, well spotted. Not sure would that have broken it. In fact, no, I'll leave that there. Yep, still not happy. Well, well when I say not happy, still completely ambivalent. Um, have we got, right, at this point, does, is opt what we, th I think it is. I think so. All goes. See what that does. Yeah, so you can see we get lots and lots, lots, but they're all coming through undefined. Okay, interesting, they are all coming through undefined. And they're all coming through undefined because at that point in time, I bet we have not yet um, registered any. I think this is a, a startup order issue. Um, yeah. 
So I think we're running this code before we've done the work to initialize keyboard shortcuts, is my guess. So down here you can see load editor. Um, in the order it initialized everything. Here you can see red dot keyboard dot in it. And then down here you can see it's set to build main menu. Um, so if we go look at keyboard dot in it. Nope. Nope. Here we are. Keyboard dot in it, and here you can see it does some asynchronous work to load the key map. Um, yeah, so just for completeness, let's put console.log loaded key map. Oop, yeah. Loaded keyboard. And in here, if I stick a console.log in here, building menu. Oh, I know. Let's get rid of that extra console log because it's flooding. So now when we reload, you can see even though we kick off initializing the keyboard first, because of that um, loading the key map is a network request, it doesn't finish until after we've built the menu. Okay. So if we really want to do this, and I don't see why not, um, we just need to tie together, um, tie this together a bit better. So easiest way to do that is in our keyboard.init, we'll now accept a single argument called done, that once we've finished loading up the keyboard, and set up all the keyword handlers, we can call done. And then what we'll do in here, I'm just trying to think, does it matter? This is just setting up keyboard handling. So that could actually be done quite late in the day, all things considered. Um, So that's just as an experiment. Move it down so that it's one of the last things we do and that we build the main menu. Now, if we look at our menu, okay, it needs a bit of UI work, but you can see we have got the keyboard shortcuts showing alongside all of our menu options where they are set. Um, yeah, a little bit of tweaking on the CSS. You can see on the disabled items, the keyboard shortcut is greyed out, but the border isn't. So that's a bit contrasty. Um, yeah. Oh, that's quite pleasing. I mean, yes, we need to improve the layout, but let's do that now. So we want to go to our menu, CSS, and remind ourselves, so red UI pop over key. Um, yeah, Steve, yeah, we're gonna get all the shortcuts over on the right-hand edge. Um, what we have to do first is just make sure we understand the um, CSS that's already being applied. So at the moment, we're using red UI popover key class. So that's the class I added to style the, the shortcuts as they appear in the tooltips because the tooltips are popovers. 
um, in our code. So that's fine. We're going to re reuse. It's OK to reuse that. What we're going to say, though, is anything UI pop over key that appears in. Um, excuse me. A what is this? think in here then is float right gonna do it let's try cool so they are all to the right but it is arguable that they could be further to the right and also they are a little squashed, aren't they? I think we could. I think we can approve a couple of different things here. Now the question is: Is it because the popover key is a bit squashed? And you can see, yeah, they are quite squashed. But then the font size is smaller. So what we're going to do is. Am I right saying their font size is smaller? Font size 11. Pop over key, font size 11, yeah. They're just looking a bit. Maybe I want to reduce the line height. So the grey background and black text would look nicer too for contrast. Yeah. Um. Well, I want to make sure they are consistent in appearance with the shortcuts as they appear in the tooltips. So whether that's a change we make to both, that's that's an open question. Um, what am I doing? Right. What is the line height? So, uh, so they've got a line height of 20, which is big. We don't want a line height of 20. I think we only want a line height of about 12. Oh, don't stick it on there, stick it on here, right. Line height 12. Uh, it's a little squashed. 14, a little better. Padding, we want a couple of pixels there, and we probably want. A bit more room. That does feel a bit more comfortable. So let's just make a note of that. Uh, line height 14, padding 2 and 4. Um, What have we got on pop over keys border? So border, yeah, we we want to I'm just trying to work within the constraints of the colour schemes we have, which is why we have the border we do. Um Actually, what's our what's the font color menu? Ah, yeah. 
we want color to be menu color. Likewise, border color. Now that that will help just keep them. We'll knock it back a bit so it's the same. Yeah. But what we also want to do is tweak it when you are hovered. Make sure. Oops. Okay, so that's made all those very dim straight away. Oh, that's interesting. It's that's all the active ones have gone dim. What have I mucked up? So anything that's disabled, any menu item that's disabled, gets a disabled color. Those guys mucking this up. What? I'm getting horribly confused now. Um, right, we're only going to set disabled color for disabled menu items. Yeah, but it's not. When in doubt, set things to bright colors that you can't help miss. I think I'm getting my menu states muddled. Yeah, see, none of active makes no difference whatsoever. And then down here, What on earth is menu colour? Because it's looking very dim to me. Menu colour is primary text colour, and primary text colour is 555, which, sure enough, is what those are. OK, so we don't want primary text. What colour text is this, then? It's getting C7. Okay, what? That's curious. Where is. Ah, Red UI header. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> so, um, menus by default look like that. That's what menus look like. That's their default styling. It's light gray with the dark text. The main menu, because it comes down from the header, is a black background. So it's got all its own CSS that overrides everything and is what's been confusing me. Right. So this wants to be semantically correct. So we want menu color and we want disabled color. Um, yeah, we're going to stick with that. So now if I go into header.css, in here, it's 
somewhere is here it is um, head menu we just need to find the right bit of it here is a a a a so that 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 and then if it is disabled we set it to that and that oh, but again we're it's getting confused why is it getting confused as uh, this specificity yeah oh you love css when it does games like this so um the css we're trying to apply is not as specific as the css we have Why isn't it specific? Where have I added? Pop over key there. So the one that's winning has dot red UI menu drop down, A, red UI pop over. Red UI menu drop down, LI. I mean, this is more specific, so this one should be winning. Or is it because it's nested inside an ID selector? I so hate using important like this. Much rather try and fix the selectors to get the specificity correct. But you can't win them all and it's 10 past 9. There we are. So that's... No, that's working, I think. Um, now, the only thing I would like is if these were... Um, so we've got the a healthy margin on the left-hand side so that we have room for the arrows. We've got a lot of wasted base over on the other side. Um, let's just see if we can... Um, here it is. So we're setting three pixel padding top and bottom and 40 pixels on both edges. But what, what if we only stuck 40 pixels on the left hand edge and on the right hand edge what looks good does that look okay I think that looks okay Maybe just a smidgen more than that. Um, yeah, I think we can go with that. Um, so what change did I just make? Uh, I changed the padding from 3 by 40. So let's just find 3 by 40. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so we're just scanning through. Right, so having done all that, 
I think I've now remembered one of the reasons why I've not done this before. So here in the menu, you can see it's got the shortcut for import as uh, command I. Well, let's go and change that shortcut to control shift I, why not? Okay. Now if I look at the menu, it's still got the old shortcut. <laughs> because we build the menu when we build it. And rather we don't rebuild the menu every time you open it. So it's building the menu. Uh, oh. Oh yes, Jim Bob, you did say it. I didn't see you say it. Um, okay. No, we can fix this. It just needs a bit of plum event handling and plumbing. So what we're going to do, I'm going to fix this in a couple of parts. Um, because we store, well, no, right, first things first. What we're going to do is, here's where we're adding, we're appending the shortcut span to, to the menu item. We're going to store it against the menu option. Uh, shortcut span. Why not? OK, then what we're going to have is a new API refresh shortcuts. Then we do for ID in menu items. So menu items is a selection of all menu items we know about. And if menu items ID on oh, Type of on select is a string because so we only care about ones that nominate actions. Um, and oh, this is right. opt dot. What do we call it? Shortcuts ban. Um, Now we could check if it's changed, to be honest. What we could easily just do, there's gonna be a bit of cut and paste here which could be improved, but we're gonna opt oh, shortcut span dot remove, delete opt oh, shortcut span, then go and get the shortcut and re-add it if it needs re-adding. So, Refresh shortcuts now exists. So if I go to, no, not there. If I go into the keyboard edit dialog, if I can remember where that is, key map, it's in the UI. There it is. Um, so in here somewhere is the edit dialog. And there should be the edit dialog. Get settings pane, here it is. If 
focus, settings pane. We need to know when the user has closed the settings dialog, because if the user closes the settings dialog, then we want to refresh the settings. So next down the rabbit hole, we need to go look at user settings .add, because there should I should be able to provide a callback to user settings. That when user settings close the keyboard shortcut pane, it um, yeah close. That's what I'm looking for. Focus close red dot key no red dot menu dot refresh shortcuts. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, has this worked? So import is command I bring up user settings, import, change it to control shift I. Okay, close. Ooh, why is that still? Something's gone wrong. Why is there still a shade over this? Something did go wrong then, but I don't know what. Yeah, so there's an error is being handled somewhere. Let's but it's being swallowed somewhere, more to the point. One thing to quickly check, have I been hasty with um, this close function? Should it actually implement something a bit more than... No, it's not like it needs a callback or anything, so let's see what this, whatever the error is. Ah, link is not defined. Oh, of course, right, right, right. Um, right, let's just roll back where we were. Get rid of that error handler. Um, so the problem is we, we delete the existing short, we remove the existing shortcut span. We're then generating a new one and I'm just trying to append it to something that no longer exists. So we're going to op.link. So we will also keep a reference to it as well. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully this is all making sense. These are all helpful. So import, well, okay, control I. It got all a bit backwards then. So let's change that now to control shift, control shift I. I didn't okay it, did I? No. Import control shift I and then you have to click the tick. So that's saved. Close. Open the menu. <gasps> Command shift I. Awesome. So it's updated the shortcut. And before I forget, oh, no, don't do that. Do this. I'm going to go revert that one. Otherwise, my fingers will wonder why Command I isn't doing what I expect it to. Okay. Um, 
And there is a few oddities like shift. Oh no, I'm not, not falling down that rabbit hole right now. Um, yeah, what do we think? Thumbs up? I see Steve's given a thumbs up. Yeah, quite like that. Well, that was unexpected, but um, we could, let's stick that in and see what people think now. I can't can't commit this for you right now because um, all of these new menu options I've added, I've got to go through and add uh, things to the message catalog for them all. Um, we might already have cut, copy, paste because I think in an earlier ver in an earlier version of Node Red, we did have a lot of these me uh, these menu options have existed before. Copy, yeah, copy to clipboard. No, that's not the same. Yeah, copy select nodes, cut node, paste nodes. So. We do have labels for some of them. But yeah, also undo the last change performed, which I can almost guarantee we don't have keyboard.undo change anywhere these days. So anyway, point being, I want to go through, tidy up some of the, the cat message catalogue and um, before we, we commit this change. But... Yeah, I think that's good. Now, the only other thing to do is just go through, because we, like I say, we use those menus in lots of places. Um, we want to make sure we don't inadvertently start showing keyboard shortcuts where we don't want for aesthetic reasons to show them. My only other thought, I think, as Steve alluded to, is whether the keyboard shortcuts ought to be uh, a bit less prominent. Um, whether actually having this in this disabled color. Well, let's just try that a second, just see what that looks like. Um, but then we'll see what that looks like, but then I really must go because uh, I've been going too long as it is. Um, so what if we just grab those colors and we stick them in here? Because in some ways you don't want the keyboard shortcut to make it harder to read. Yeah, you see that looks better, doesn't it? And it doesn't actually matter that... Yeah, I think that looks good. Hey, Zora Mill. Um, so we've been spending time in the main menu and adding in menu options for some of the stuff we've some of the actions we've built on the last couple of live streams around aligning and distributing nodes. Um, but in the last half hour or so, been updating the menu code to display keyboard shortcuts for the menu options if they exist. But um, having just tweaked the color, so the keyboard shortcuts um, are dark, then that will be good. Hard to know how much of a lag there is, but um, oh, I can see OBS is complaining about bandwidth, so maybe my uplink is struggling. But at this point, I've been going for an hour and a half. It is time for me to stop. I need to go do stuff. So quite pleased with that. I think that looks really good. Um, I will tidy up the message catalog and get the pull request updated. And then I think that's this feature, which remember was just meant to be about the view tools, pretty done. And next week I'll be back same time, same place, 8 p.m. UK time next Monday. And we'll do something fun and exciting. In the meantime, have a good week. Um, come say hi in Slack if you want to chat about anything you've seen. Do leave a comment. 
or like, subscribe, follow, I don't know, whatever verb you want to do, do it. And that's it. Goodbye. Farewell. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Bye now.